This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Good evening. Welcome to the Brighton Central School District Board of Education public meeting for Tuesday, February 26th. This meeting is called to order. To begin with, as is our custom, we allow for public participation, which is uh, receiving feedback or questions from members of our community. Is anybody here tonight that would like to provide feedback or who has a question? See, none will move on in the agenda. Uh, next up, you all have received the agenda and um, any questions with regards to tonight's agenda? Motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Susan. Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Likewise, we've received the minutes from our last meeting, uh, the business meeting on January 23rd. Any questions, edits, or changes to those minutes? Motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Eleanor. Second. Second by Susan. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, excited tonight, um, as everybody knows virtually, uh, we operate from our blueprint. It helps us focus, it helps us prioritize, and it helps us all be aligned. Uh, we are fortunate to be getting some updates on the blueprint from uh, Lou, Allison, and Deanna. So I will turn it over to them. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Happy to be here tonight with all of you. And um, actually, you will hear from Lou, Deanna, myself and also Jeff and Caitlin tonight who will be giving us some updates as to the work that's going Sorry, on. Sorry Jeff and district. Caitlin, I apologize. <laughs> okay. So again, just to restate our priority areas for the year, we are focusing on mental health and wellness, academic excellence, the student family and family experience, staff support and collaborative culture, and safety and planning for the future. And we'll briefly just review what the blueprint objective is for that area and provide some updates to the work that's been going on around the district since the last time we gave an update in November. So up first, we have mental health and wellness today. So that is Deanna. Hello, everybody. Good some, quick, some quick updates from our area, and I would be remiss with that when I say our. I want to talk about Caitlin Feeney also and her leadership across K-12 in this particular area. Um, even tomorrow, we will be, our leadership team will be spending most of our leadership team meeting with Dr. Melissa Heatley from URMC. I have been highlighting and talking about different professional development opportunities and consultations that we've been able to benefit from with our partnership with Galisano, whether that is small team meetings at individual buildings, whether it is our mental health team meeting, and for example, like I said, tomorrow with all district leaders, um, and that example is listed on the slide here. Upcoming in the spring, um, the team will also be going and spending a full staff meeting with the high school in the spring um, around question, persuade, refer, uh, looking at suicide warning signs in, in young adults. I referenced some specific building support that's happening across K-12. I just sat in a meeting this week where uh, Dr. Heatley consulted um, on a specific student's re-engagement plan, re-entry plan, and it was very clear um, the, the solution-focused perspective that was, was presented to the team, her knowledge and her commitment with the family, but also the knowledge and, and creating a culture of building development with the whole team that then they can carry on and, and move forward. Um, Caitlin has been working most recently on looking at our uh, social emotional learning survey that will be given out in the spring, analyzing, analyzing, and analyzing questions, uh, looking for alignment, and making sure that we're surveying our parents, our students, our staff in a way that we get the information that we need um, so that we can continue to give students what they need. Um, definitely looking at questions, and you've been working very closely, I know, with both um, middle school and high school to make sure that those questions are um, aligned with what we're looking for, but also um, reflective of, of the needs that were expressed in previous surveys. Um, our team's K-12 representatives have already completed refreshers and trainings around the Mo Monique Burr and Second Step implementation training and have gotten together looking, taking a look at where um, unit curriculum and where things need to be shifted, changed. Uh, this is really great, we need to add this, we're not using this anymore at this point in time. Different examples of things like that that's already been implemented for this school year. 
we are really continuing to spend a lot of time focusing, you heard me reference before, around school re-engagement plans, uh, supporting students and families where their needs are around school avoidance and how that can look, very individualized case-by-case -case basis, and how we can have students return to school and feel safe about returning to school. And we've again been utilizing our partnership with URMC in that regard. So lots of wonderful things happening, more trainings to come. We're really excited about the direction where we're taking and how we're meeting the needs of our students. Uh, we have a healthy waiting list for our Gal Galisano partnership. I forgot to mention on the previous slide. Um, and we're continuing to look at, we are currently servicing students and families two and a half days a week. Is that a place where we can look at expanding, location, all great questions that we're asking when we meet with them monthly. So. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, thank you. In the area of academic excellence, some updates around our transfer goals. So we've been talking about these through our blueprint work for the past two years, last year and this year, and we've con been continuing our work throughout the school year since I gave the update in November. And you might have heard from some of the board updates too along the way about the work that Curriculum Council is doing this year. Mm -hmm. And our hope for this year is we've really um, taken one transfer goal for every content area and we are looking at collecting student work from individual classroom teachers from kindergarten through 12th grade around that content area so that at our April Superintendent's Conference Day we can look at a continuum of work across our district and see where we need to make changes and where we're doing really great work in terms of meeting the transfer goals for our students and Curriculum Council has been doing a fantastic job of identifying a graduation exemplar for each content area so we have something to hold that up to as we look at that K-12 continuum so Huge thanks to our instructional leadership team at K-12 who has been leading this work day to day with the teachers in each school building and more to come as we progress through the year, but really excited about the work that's going on there. We're continuing to work through our culturally responsive professional learning. We've been working with ReCenter on, um, at the Fall Superintendents Conference Day. We'll be working together again at our April Conference Day and we're really excited because all of our consultants will be joining us in person in April which is fantastic so we have two at each school building we've been doing a lot on zoom together they did come in person for our new teacher orientation over the summer but I think that will be pretty fantastic and Dr. Hall and his team at the high school have been really doing a lot of work around equitable grading practice and they've been making some phenomenal progress in that area, kind of looking at you know standardization across the school of like what are some common practices that we're going to follow as a building. Lots of teachers in all content areas have tried out different things in their classrooms, in their courses, or on a team, and we're kind of coming together to bring all of those thoughts together and produce something that we can share with all teachers as we enter fall next year. We've also done a good review of math data post-COVID. So, this is something I haven't reported out on yet, but we've been working on for the first half of the school year. And one of the big ways that we looked at this data was by doing a survey for our math teachers in grades one through 12. And some science teachers at the high school also provided some feedback. But we had teachers rank strengths and weaknesses of the math strands um, for all grade levels. So we can kind of get a good idea of where we're seeing the strengths and weaknesses and look for the gaps that we were noticing in courses. So asking questions like, what content have you skipped over based on prioritizing things that we knew were most important. And now where we are is working with math leaders and building administrators to kind of plan next steps. And those are some very concrete steps that will happen over the next, this year and into next year um, on meeting the gaps that we see. So for example, looking at students, you know, in particular at the algebra one level and looking at um, some big gaps that we notice there. We notice at the elementary level, some big gaps in math fact knowledge. So we've come up with a list of recommendations that we're bringing to school principals and looking at for summer professional development for you know, extra support for students, whether it's after school sessions or summer work and all of those kind of pieces. So right now we're in the midst of putting the plan together, but we did collect a lot of great information. So more to come on that blueprint goal. And then you've heard about this a ton and I just have to keep bringing it up, but uh, yeah, I heard that Colleen shared out on it, Matt shared out, out about this too, but our um, teachers have been doing phenomenal work around wit and wisdom and implementing a new curriculum at Council Rock and at French Road. And our letters training and road to reading um, instruction has just continued. And again, it's been phenomenal just seeing that continuation from Council Rock to French Road of students learning, growing, teachers learning and growing, and that really that continuation, again, much like the transfer goals. We know where we're going, we know what we're doing, we know why we're doing it. So that's been pretty phenomenal this year as well. I'm ignoring that update right now. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. And hopefully that stays there. And I'm going to pass it off now to Jeff. Thanks. <coughs> good evening, everybody. Um, good to see everybody. So let's start tomorrow night. It is our second annual Urban Suburban Family Social. We're really looking forward to it. I know some of you uh, may be able to make it. We're looking forward to celebrating our seniors as an addition this school year. So those of us that are able to make it, uh, thanks for your time. And it'll be a really cool experience to see the, the students get uh, celebrated. Um, for our new students and families, the building level teams are continuing. There it goes to I got 44 minutes. I will not be up here that long, though. Um, to review the processes for um, welcoming our new families, uh, making up follow-up phone calls to connect and check in to see what their needs are, see how things are going with the students and the families. Um, we continue on the, as a district to collaborate with PTSA. They are looking to create a new position to uh, work, partner with the district in order to be able to reach out to new families and get information so that we can uh, figure out what the needs are. Uh, that's still a work in pro uh, progress as we move forward throughout the school year. I'm gonna to touch that. Um, student interactions, we continue to find ways for students to interact with each other throughout the district. As we all know, our students are naturally separated throughout the four buildings, but when we have students to interact with students from other buildings, it's always great. Our younger students always look at our older students as if they are superstars, because they are. Um, there's an internship program we have with uh, some BHS students going to Council Rock. Um, this Friday, next Friday, we have for Black History Month, some of our minority students at the high school going to uh, read um, text of uh, minority authors. Um, two students uh, in the library there. We're really looking forward to that. Uh, Fres, this upcoming spring, we have some students going to work on some science lessons. Um, we've, as we all know, uh, under the leadership of Dr. Glazer over here, we uh, have a ton of amazing uh, concerts, some that have already happened. Um, and some that are going to be coming up this month, but it's always great when we uh, the students have a chance to uh, make music together. And then, this has not officially been announced, but you're hearing it here first. Um, Dr. Hall knows a little bit, but we have that dodgeball game coming up next month. I promise, if you want to warm up with me, I will not be throwing the ball in your face. I'm sorry, Esther. I'm sorry. Um, I know it's nothing but love, though. It was accident, okay? Accidents happen. Um, <clears throat> student transitions. We, uh, in the, throughout all the buildings, we've had uh, several meetings to prepare families and students for the move, um, for the students that are in those <coughs> transition years. Um, myself, building leaders, continue to, to uh, look and revamp some of the events and processes that we have in order to support students throughout um, those changes. And when it comes to student access, the school-based equity teams continue to uh, work and do great work. Um, at the building level in our district team, uh, we plan a meeting next month uh, to have a chance to gather and uh, continue to work with all the stakeholders, not just employees of the district, but uh, community members, uh, parents, um, board members, and all the like. The student support fund, we continue to recognize in our district that our needs of our families continue to uh, increase and our, our district is continuing to, our demographics continue to change. We want to continue to look at ways to get creative to support students and families um, and partner with PTSA. Um, as we know, the big topic is oftentimes uh, some of the cost of field trip. Well, first of all, the cost of everything right now. We're all experiencing it. But um, you know, many of the opportunities, they do cost money oftentimes. We want to be able to make sure that we are providing access to all of our students' families, or at least looking at ways to provide support throughout that. So we want to continue to look at that. Brighten your wardrobe. Um, as we all know, it moved here to uh, the administrative building. Um, it has been a huge hit. Our mental health staff members in the buildings, especially at the um, high school and TCMS that are geographically um, near this location, we've had students and families reach out. Um, I know with winter, um, we've had many families coming in here. Myself, I've personally taken many families up there to be able to get uh, winter gear. But we were also given an awesome donation from the town of Brighton um, uh, with, with backpacks and brand new sneakers and uh, really awesome calculators to Dr. Hall and his staff there to be able to give students, as we know, talking about costs, um, those calculators can be very expensive, so it's, we're really appreciative of the partnership with the Town of Brighton and the uh, very generous uh, donation. And then I've not mentioned it to, uh, in this forum, but we are going to be going on the HBCU trip this year. We're really, really excited about it. We have already had four college um, 
visits that we have confirmed. Uh, as of right now, we're taking 35 uh, sophomores and juniors and one senior actually uh, to the trip this year. We are looking on doing it on a biannual basis moving forward, but uh, public shout out to the Ferris Foundation for their support in order and, and helping us and supporting us to be able to make it affordable for all of our students and families this school year. So um, those are the updates I have. Thank you for everyone's collective effort to support our students and families at all times. Thank you. I can update this. I have my paper copy. Lou, I hope you can do it out. <laughs> okay. <Ooh>. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Staff support and collaborative culture. Um, so again, you know, focusing on staff feeling a sense of belonging um, and building that culture. So um, last, uh, just a few weeks ago or a week ago, January 26, the teachers were able to work um, in their classrooms. That whole day was given to them to collaborate with their colleagues to work on anything that they need to, to support their um, their day-to-day -day instruction. Faculty meetings continue to include those connection times and also some time given back to staff, um, given back to do um, things in their classroom or even uh, to connect and, and acknowledge kids. So giving people time to send home postcards and um, other acknowledgments. And then buildings continuing to offer release time to different teams and departments. So giving um, teams a larger block of time. So beyond like their common planning time, if they needed like a few, uh, let's say two hours to plan something, giving them that time. Deanna referenced a little bit around the data analysis, but um, buildings are continuing to use that data to support this initiative. Um, highlighting areas of need and from the survey with the with all of the faculty and kind of making those plans for how do we support those areas of need um, including those on the school-based equity teams and the other building level committees uh, the youth at risk survey so the survey that all of our students grades 7 through 12 um, were given the opportunity to take those results were analyzed by our mental health team and administration and then both the middle school and the high school shared out the findings of that survey the next area is related to fostering joy um, so the buildings continue to organize fun games and activities that include central office here um, so the five buildings are really focusing on bringing people together um, so things like breakfast, the flash mob at the middle school, cookie exchanges, kindness calendars, just things to um, encourage people to come together, connect with other people that they might not normally. Um, and as well as some encouragement for faculty and staff to attend different events. So concerts, plays, sporting events to be seen out in the community. Um, we continue to focus on restorative practices and building community through that. Um, so those lessons continue in, in the classrooms and then teachers and administration continue to use restorative practices and conversations um, when they are working with students and also with the staff. And the last area was around supporting staff um, with clear and consistent communication and follow through. So the building principals each shared, you know, working on their, you know, their weekly staff newsletters and ensuring that um, that is really sharing a lot of information in a clear and, and consistent manner. Um, using open forums at different meetings, so things like team leaders or other committee met meetings, and giving people an opportunity to share out. Some other highlights are using technology to increase that um, communication and transparency, so specifically at the middle school, using a Schoology um, platform that's a place, a central place that people can go to find the information that they need. And then at French Road, shifting to school tool for behavior referrals to ensure that referrals are communicated appropriately and then that the follow through is kind of all in one central location. And that is mine. Good evening. So for the safety and planning for the future, uh, at the last Blueprint update, uh, Mrs. Mosier took you through the really the first part of it, establishing standards on school safety. Um, she highlighted all her work that she's been leading in documenting our safety procedures, um, adoption of the, uh, the shell card, our emergency communication system. So I'm going to take this opportunity with the capital project vote tomorrow to, uh, to talk about um, the details of facilities master planning, considering modernization and sustainability. 
So just a quick overview of what Mrs. Mosier presented. Again, the shell card and really her taking on the role, moving from a assistant principal position to the director of safety and security, all the work that she's been doing, having conversations at the building with administrative teams, documenting procedures, adopting consistent language, um, and consistent protocols, you know, going through the, the process with them, an iterative process with the buildings. Couldn't be more proud of the work that she's doing in partnership with our buildings. Um, this capital project, this is the postcard, um, compliments to Dan Goldman and to Campus Construction for helping us synthesize uh, this project and all the material in the postcard that was sent to the community. This is a deliverable from the blueprint planning process. This goes back several years when I talk about the scope, it, it's really a culmination of all the work over the last couple of years. Um, you can see on the right hand side is the project scope, everything we hope to achieve in this project that we are really excited about. We think we uh, solve some really generational problems in this, in this project. Uh, it highlights the financing of it and how we've, we tried to explain to the community that this is a reinvestment. So the current tax dollars that you're already paying that goes towards capital, uh, we're asking you to continue to pay that same amount but no new taxes uh, using that old, old thing. So areas of the highlight, you look at our campus schematic and this is conversations that date back to our uh, the blueprint committee that studied school start times and we said if this is an area of investment that may create an opportunity in the future. So we've been talking about investment here to put uh, to relieve the pressure at the end of end of the day, especially in the fall and the in the spring seasons. When we talked in the blueprint planning process about accessibility to the high school um, and equity within the building, equitable access, we talked about and we've been trying to solve this problem for decades of how do we create an accessible entrance to the high school. We finally figured out a way, and compliments to our design team and SEI design, to, to look critically at our buildings in partnership with our building administration to examine how we're using the space within the building to come up with a conceptual plan to add an elevator that would allow equitable access to the fourth floor and then allow for modernization of that fourth floor um, so we can invest in, in programming um, for those curricular areas. Through the blueprint planning process, we've always been talking about safety and security and the middle school office layout. So moving the main office at the middle school down to the front and then creating an opportunity for a dedicated space for mental health services uh, is proposed in this project as well. It's something we've been talking about for, for a number of years that we feel we meet that objective in this, uh, this project. The safety concerns at French Road uh, bus loop and how the buses are stacked parallel right now. We have a couple of waves in. This is a conceptual uh, schematic of the layout that would allow us to adopt a Chevron style similar to what we did at uh, Council Rock uh, that mitigates those safety, safety concerns. So again, everything we've been talking about through the blueprint planning, planning process over these last several years, this is, again, I use that term again, deliverable of this process. Um, that's for uh, voter consideration tomorrow night. The polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and we look forward to, uh, to a positive um, turnout and we look forward to the results of that, of the vote. Thank you. A couple quick comments and then I'll ask the board if there's any comments. It, it's one thing obviously to create a blueprint. It's, a, it's a yet another thing to get it out there and everybody see it. But we appreciate the time spent on updates. The couple of things that, that jumped out for me. I love the focus on math and literacy. We're always trying to figure out better ways to teach and learn. So we're always learning and evolving. I appreciate that. Um, Jeff, two years ago, you didn't exist. And then, like, all of a sudden, two years later... At least here. At least here. <laughs> at least here. Yeah, but two years later, all of a sudden we're here. We have this amazing, amazing HBCU trip that, like, we saw the video from it last year, which was just outstanding. And um, what you have built for this community is outstanding. So, so greatly appreciated for everything that you've done. Um, what is this dodgeball game? I don't know. What's this dodgeball game? Did you game? do this is last this? year? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and with regards to the capital project, we'll close with that as well. It's going to address a bunch of things. Um, we'll get to address some safety issues. I love the focus on the mental health services for a couple of schools and most notably access, complete access in the high school um, for all four floors for everybody. So um, just some really cool stuff. It's great to get updates and see that we're actually working to the plan and working at things on it. And when we're not getting progress, we're making changes when we need to, to sort of address it. Anything else anybody wants to ask or comment on regards to the blueprint? 
I think it was excellent. I wanted to just shout out um, as part of like academic excellence at the end, um, collecting student work to actually like to, to look at student work and bring that into the April superintendent superintendent's conference day. I think that's amazing because you can look at survey results, but like seeing the actual work and diving into that, I love that. So very exciting, the whole presentation. Anything else? A couple quick thoughts. One, um, if Hope made it happen, I'd wear a smaller sh uh, suit size, mm -hmm. right? So like you need a plan to do that. And there's that's no different in terms of organizational change, improvement, and continuously growing. We have to always be thinking about what is the plan to get there and not just existing. Like we're not gonna go out of business. Kids are gonna keep showing up. Mm -hmm. People put their kids on the bus, if nothing else, because it'd be great to have them leave the house for the day, right? So kids are still gonna come here, we're gonna still offer a service. The question whether or not we want to offer a better service and be better all the time and always improve um, is really answered by having a plan to make that happen. People work exceptionally hard no matter what, whether they have a plan in front of them or not, they're doing their level best. When kids come here, not to be um, you know, frivolous about that or, or, or light about that, they really are always working very hard. But the question is, are they doing the right work? So this plan allows us every year to say, are we doing the right work? What sh adjustments should we make? And commit to a series of actions to do that and then measure ourselves and regularly report out on that. So tonight is a big part of that accountability piece. Organizations get caught up in our system in the like capital A accountability for years with test scores, and we do talk a lot about graduation rate, those measures are very important to mm -hmm. us, but it's more about are we getting the work done that we said we would do because these are the actions we think will improve outcomes for kids. So super proud every time we do these updates of all the things that are happening. There is the day-to-day -day awesome work that happens when kids get on that bus, get off that bus, go to school, get fed, get inspired, get taught, but then there has to be this like arch over that of organizationally, what is the organization doing through the whole year to make that better every day. It can't just be about the work that's happening in that moment, but the other work that parallels that, that helps us get better. And these are great summaries of that. Mm -hmm. So, so appreciate that. Um, thanks to everybody for presenting and really getting into that work with us. Great work. Thank you. Um, next up, the 2024-2025 school calendar, always much anticipated for family planning. This is obviously next year's calendar. I'll make note that uh, for the first time we'll be taking off for Diwali and the Asian Lunar New Year. Um, Eid is predicted to fall on a weekend and that uh, the Jewish holidays have remained. Um, we'll continue to expect it to be inclusive for our entire community and learn as we go. Um, often do it correctly, occasionally make a mistake, but expect um, to always listen and receive feedback and make adjustments based on that. Any, we've had a chance to see the calendar, obviously. Any questions from the board in regards to the calendar? No, but Lunar New Year is this Saturday, so yeah. happy Lunar New Year to everyone. Mm -hmm. In year, what is it's the year of the dragon. the dragon. All right. Mm -hmm. So happy auspicious year of the dragon to everyone. My Welsh background likes that, so that's good. Um, any other comments with regards to the calendar? <clears throat> yes, I think you make a great point in terms of continuing to be as inclusive as we possibly can. Um, I'm glad you pointed out Eid falling on a weekend next year. This year it is still, as far as we know, on April 10th. We won't be able to confirm that date though for our community until early March to mid-March uh, when it is determined exactly what day Eid is and then we will make adjustments accordingly. As far as we know it is still April 10th. Um, when, I just want to reiterate with people, when the calendar predicts Eid to be on a weekend, the year prior, we won't schedule for it. When it is predicted to be on a weekday, we will do our level best to take that day off, but may need to adjust, which we communicated last year when the calendar went out, if E changes. Um, you mentioned Diwali, I'm very glad that we're taking that off for the first time. Uh, we will be really the first in the area for that to happen also. And Dr. Hall is probably wondering, there is a two week break at uh, the winter break next year. It does come up with somebody on our team quite often. You probably now know who, uh, but we're really excited about that. And you did mention the Jewish holidays. The third and fourth is Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur falls on a weekend, so it is not then a day out of the school calendar. People will notice that the superintendent's conference day for staff is August 28th before kids come back. That means kids start on the Tuesday after Labor Day. Uh, often that's been Wednesday, but we have started on Tuesday in years past. So hopefully can, people can adjust vacation plans accordingly. And this is the latest end to the year that people will have seen for a very long time. School going until June 27th, 
uh, for everybody. It's a rating day at the high school level, at the elementary level. It's a superintendent's conference day. And school would tentatively end on June 26th for K-8 kids. Again, that is with uh, assuming that all snow days would be used. So we always try and end a little bit earlier if we can not based on the snow day uh, count. So. Yes, I had a couple things I wanted to mention. But we'll get that out to people, and Dan's uh, writing a summary of that, too, to send to people so they have that information quickly. Thanks. If there are no further questions, motion to approve the 2024-2025 school calendar is already received. So moved. Moved by Esther. Second. Seconded by Eleanor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up, we have a first read policy um, uh, with regards to district investments. Um, we have an opportunity to begin investing money through this policy and it's important to maximize revenue generating opportunities to see if the money can grow for us at all. Anything you or Lou want to add on this? Uh, no. You all have had a chance to review this and uh, obviously this is a first read. Um, any questions with regards to the first read? Motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Moved by Susan? Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Next up is a second read, always a tough topic, very important, and that is uh, workplace violence. The uh, state did uh, update its law on January 4th, if, uh, effective, excuse me, January 4th, and this is just to reflect the update to the law there. Um, we did have a chance for a first read on this before I put it forward for approval. Is there anything you want to mention on that? No, not at all. Okay. Thank you. Pretty straightforward what it is and wanting to make sure we have a safe workplace, obviously, and also be compliant with New York State law. Questions from the board? Motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Eleanor? Second. Seconded by Susan. All those in favor? Okay. All right. Next up, this is fantastic, and I will ask either you or Lou to have a brief comment about this. Uh, this is approval of a gift agreement by and between the Gerald and Daphna Kramer Foundation and the Brighton Central School District under policy 5108. Um, this is just uh, from the Kramer family whose father had uh, a great connection, was a graduate of the Brighton School System and had a great connection to it. Um, just an incredibly generous gift, but I'll have you give the background. Sure, uh, just very briefly, the family contacted us several years ago about opportunities perhaps to give in their father's legacy, and uh, we've been really excited to rename the tennis courts and a maker space at the high school. Um, it was part of that gift as well, and now we're talking about the Center for Entrepreneurship. So very generous donation, uh, part of which has already been received. Um, and the second half of that gift uh, now coming to fruition and this agreement memorializes uh, between ourselves and the family how that will work and how it is named and kind of the particulars around that. But incredibly generous, um, thoughtful of the family and very excited for his legacy to live on in our hallways and in our experiences for our kids. Lou, would you add anything to that? You've worked quite a bit on this as well. Yeah, um, no, we started off with the tenor, the tennis center and then really Tracy has picked it up from there and worked with uh, Mr. Kramer, Doug Kramer, on the development of uh, you know, curriculum, plans, and presentation for the entrepreneurial center at the high school. So really credit to Tracy for uh, her taking all these matters and uh, building this vision with, uh, with the Kramer family. Uh, I'll, I'll just repeat what Lou said. Um, we focused uh, part of the first gift on the tennis center. I'm not sure it was picked up, Bill, so I want to make sure we say it. And that Tracy Glazer has worked with the family and the foundation um, with some some gifts associated with the arts. And the entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, center, I'm yeah. sorry. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Um, we all know about the gift agreement. Motion to approve the gift agreement. So moved. Moved by owner. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Um, we've got a consent agenda with some uh, field trip approval, some fundraising activities, always fun, and um, some gifts. We, as is our practice, we will read the gifts. <laughs> a gift from the Pittsford Wagmans to the Brighton Central School District in the amount of $500 gift card to be used to purchase snacks and supplies for the historically black colleges and universities trip to Washington, D.C. What's the date of that trip? Like the month? April? Yes. April? No. March. 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 Thank you. That's coming up in March next month. A gift in the amount of $4,053 to the Brighton Central School District from the Brighton Education Fund for the purchase of several interactive, innovative learning materials for special education students in grades three through five. A gift in the amount of $925 to the Brighton Central School District from the Brighton Education Fund 
for a Van de Graaff generator and a Hoffman electrolysis device for the middle school science program. Hopefully I pronounced those things correctly. Okay. And finally, a gift from Karen Altman, class of 70, to the Brighton Central School District in the amount of $400 to the PTSA support fund. Lovely gift. Motion to approve the consent agenda as stated. So Moved by Susan? Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Before we adjourn, a couple of quick notes. Um, I looked this up the other day. There's 755,000 people that live in Monroe County. So if I figure half are women, I'm just guessing. That's 377,000 women. 14, four, and then 10. 14 of those women were nominated for the Athena Award. And one of them is sitting directly to my left. As a board, we are incredibly proud that Christina Lee was one of only 14 nominees for the Athena Award, and we wish her our congratulations. It was an absolutely fantastic event, and it was great to sit with your whole family. But our congratulations to you and the great work you're doing. <laughs> Next up, um, Lou referred to it. I'm going to say it again. Bill, if you can zoom in on me. Vote is tomorrow. You received this hard copy mailer. Um, you received other mailers. It's on social media. Uh, an incredibly important project. We hope everybody takes the time to get out and vote. It's at uh, this building that we're in right now, which is a commonly referred to as central office. It's in the gym in the back corner, so you can access it from the front or the back. We hope as many people get out as possible to vote. It's from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And um, thanks as always. Did you notice that piece? What's that? The project will have no impact on the local tax levy? No, so so in, no uh, in other words, it won't increase your taxes. Yes. So in capital money, this kind of money can only be spent on this. So it's, mm -hmm. it's outside of a regular budget conversation, yes. but no impact on taxes. That's pretty I impressive. Did I didn't know if you noticed. I just wanted to make sure. Thank yeah. you. No. Just wanted to make sure. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you for that emphasis. Uh, and as always, we arrived here. Everything was working. We were set up and ready to go. We thank our outstanding clerk, Kim, but also our tech crew, Simon, Mike, and Ben. <coughs> thank you all very much for the work you're doing. Anything else for the good of the order? Not at all. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Esther. Second. Seconded by Susan. All those in favor? Aye. We are. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education.